I'm quite delighted to be here. At the same time, a little bit worried uh, that uh, uh, we may uh, have to handle uh, more harder situations. But nevertheless, thank you for inviting. Uh, I realize that in this situation, I better say less and listen more, or perhaps do more. I'll leave. Uh, harder questions to Kun Pavut, the police who should be in a hot seat. Uh, but uh, uh, I think being in this room reminded me quite interestingly. I began my career in 1993, uh, 22 years ago in this room. I, I began teaching. I'm not so sure, Ajahn Chichan, you began in this room or not, but I was here for the first time teaching in this faculty. Although we have a new building on that side, you know, uh, this uh, building reminded me of the Thai situation. We are facing with new and old uh, issues at the same time, at the same place. So uh, this is a good reminder of me. Um, I think uh, in that regard, uh, I, I would say not too much uh, focusing on three main issues. Uh, I, I realize that. Uh, Saying more may be good for some of these uh, diplomats uh, to grab headlines and to uh, raise attention for your capitals. But in our case, uh, uh, it may not be that good uh, to say more uh, in security terms. You know, but uh, I'll focus my, 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 my observations on, on three uh, different uh, points. Uh, the first point, uh, I think uh, I agree with uh, uh, Anthony Davis, and uh, which is uh, a good a good friend of mine for for a long time. I think I began my career. I, I began to meet Anthony. He hasn't changed much. Uh, he claimed that he doesn't know much, but I think we, we learn more from him from uh, from time to, to time. And I agree with Kunkawi that uh, the first point is, uh, is uh, we are facing with a new situation, uh, a new challenge. Uh, if you look at the uh, current event. Uh, uh, this group of people uh, is better trained, uh, better planned, better organized, uh, and, and of course, after the incident, the, the better cover-up. It's very difficult to investigate. Uh, I think uh, you can find these uh, uh, observations in the Prime Minister's remarks, uh, Deputy Prime Minister's remarks, and remarks of the Deputy uh, remarks of the Chiefs uh, of the security units, including the police. Indeed, uh, I, I think uh, we are uh, now in the new situation. Yeah. Although some of these may be old, but the cur current uh, level of uh, uh, violence, the cur current level of uh, network, the uh, current level of the uh, intention of these people are quite clear that we are now need to re-examine uh, the situation more closely, but, and, and I'm glad that uh, some of these uh, security units are doing that. So this is my first point. I just I just leave it there that uh, this is not the same. Although you may know already that Thailand is not new in terms of uh, incidents like this. Uh, from domestic point of view, from international point of view, we have had many, many you know, numerous incidents uh, involving embassies, involving domestic violence involving the South. I'm from the South, in uh, my hometown is in the South. So uh, this is not new, in fact, in many regards. But there are many elements that I mentioned uh, earlier that are new, or at least uh, brought to the higher level. So this is something that we are fully aware of, and we are now looking into it more closely. Uh, I think second, uh, this is not new, uh, as I uh, mentioned. This is why uh, last year, uh, October 1st last year, 
the current administration uh, began to set up uh, a unified operation center uh, in, in involving all security units uh, uh, to operate, uh, to counter some, some of these uh, threats, uh, if you can call it threats or risks. Uh, it's a centralized, unified operations or command center situated in the Ministry of Defense. We had the first annual uh, report last, uh, last week. Uh, I'm sure you realize that uh, uh, we have more than 200,000 police uh, forces in Thailand and probably more than 300,000 military forces. We also have several thousand civilian you know, uh, personnel working in the security sector. You need a unified command structure. And it did happen last year uh, on the October 1st. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister General Pramit Wong Suwan was the chief uh, of that uh, operation center. And that operation center aimed specifically uh, the uh, objective of that uh, center is exactly the, uh, uh, the, the name of this talk, to improve the security, safety, and stability of the people and, and of the country. Uh, we had the first annual report last Friday on the operations, and we set out the new uh, targets uh, for this year. Uh, so this is my second point. Uh, uh, you are now beginning to see new operations in a more unified fashion. Uh, you, you see more of a military led uh, approaches in different areas. And this is not actually quite new, but uh, it was brought up into a uh, better you know, level. Uh, if you observed uh, carefully, in many, many uh, uh, operations, we usually involve military forces uh, in terms of counter trafficking, in terms of uh, counter human trafficking in, in particular, in terms of uh, 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 enforcement of uh, uh, drug, you know, uh, countering drug, you know, uh, uh, trafficking in terms of uh, operations in many areas to improve safety on the borders. Uh, it usually involves uh, more military forces uh, as we are lacking of the police and civilian forces in many key areas. So, but uh, under this center, uh, it is more unified, more combined, and uh, it's more up to date. But of course, there's still uh, lack of uh, uh, lack of you know, capacity in certain areas. I am not so sure. I totally agree with Kun Kavi that we totally fail in this regard. But of course, uh, the incident at Rajapasong reminded me that we still have a long way to go. Uh, and also, this uh, center operated quite well uh, uh, under this current routine with our uh, foreign countries, uh, our foreign friends. Uh, uh, this current incident, the uh, Rajapasong incident, involves certain elements uh, that is foreign. Uh, that's why the arrest of these uh, individuals, the uh, information regarding of these individuals, have been very much supported uh, by uh, uh, our friends. Let's put it that way. You know, uh, uh, and in particular, uh, some of our uh, neighbors are very much cooperative uh, with the military, in particular with the police in general. <coughs> Uh, in terms of uh, uh, making some of these uh, progress in the in investigation and incident. Uh, and I, I think this is, uh, uh, although uh, you see new operations, uh, new types of operation under the new center, uh, there are still many old approaches, uh, the combined uh, unified approaches uh, of these at the moment uh, m make us uh, feel more uh, uh, secure in certain regards, but there are more to do. Uh, in the future. So this is my second point. Uh, you need a much better, uh, learning from the incidents in the past, not only the Pachapaso incident, you need a much better uh, uh, security uh, structure you know, uh, for the country. This is why uh, my third point is that uh, in the recent weeks, you saw new discussion about new type of uh, security structure. Possibly will happen within this administration. Uh, it's not that uh, uh, this administration is led by the military, or it's not that uh, the military uh, places more emphasis on security as Prime Minister has uh, only. But if you look at uh, different agencies, uh, they are aiming, they are pushing. I think they are talking about security sector reform for many years. I think this is a turning point uh, in, my, in, my, in my responsibility. I, I, I think uh, 
uh, it is turning point uh, that we are now ready to push for a new structure. In the last few weeks, you saw a discussion of the new type of the homeland uh, uh, department uh, being suggested. Uh, I'm not saying that this is a final uh, proposal yet, but indeed, uh, 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 we are looking at a, uh, a security sector reform. Prime Minister have asked you know, the uh, different groups to come up with a national security strategy, national strategy you know, for the country uh, in the next uh, 20 years. This is the first time that we are ever, and I realize that very few people have done that. Uh, normally, you cannot look very far you know, into the future. 20 years in the future? Are you kidding? You know, we are looking at five years you know, only, and five years not ahead. We are looking at five years behind that we haven't done things. You know, the current implementation of these plans are just you know, five years ago that we have, haven't done things. But now, Prime Minister, it's very clear that all agencies must uh, put forward you know, uh, national strategy, uh, security or national strategy plans for the next 20 years. Uh, and uh, soon, the new uh, constitution drafters will reconsider, reconsider this you know, proposal of uh, how to make uh, a national strategy more permanent. So this is my third point. Uh, the new structure is now being considered, uh, is now being studied. Uh, of course, realizing that we, we are not a, a developed country, uh, we don't uh, have that much budget. But you're looking at a effort to combine and unify certain uh, 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 certain uh, uh, areas, certain activities. Uh, immigration is one. Kun uh, Wood may touch on that more. Uh, we need to uh, bring up this immigration you know, uh, office, uh, NIA office, maybe uh, the uh, ISOC office, uh, the Internal Operations uh, uh, Command Center, uh, and perhaps one center in the south, the SB PAC. Uh, and a few other centers, uh, including the NIA, NSC, to be under one roof uh, soon uh, within uh, uh, this administration. So you can uh, uh, better uh, uh, cope and handle uh, the new uh, situation. Uh, that's not the problem. The, the proposals to study the security sector reform, proposal to create a homeland uh, security similar to different countries' uh, uh, structures have been here you know, for many years. But it has to be taking place within uh, uh, this administration as instructed you know, by the top officers. Uh, that's not my challenge. My challenge is, uh, of course, uh, to make it under the civilian rule after the election, to make this new structure more democratic, uh, or to work with the democratic system that uh, on the way. Uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, our challenge, to make the new structure uh, more uh, uh, permanent under civilian rule and under the democ democratic system. So this is my third point. Uh, we are looking at this. Uh, using that SOMA ball, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Unified Center for Security Resolution that are already in operation for one year, I think that may provide a blueprint you know, of uh, what to come. Uh, but with the limitations of, uh, of our budget, our, our capacity, uh, of course, we uh, are not going to be able to follow some of the you know, uh, developed countries' you know, uh, reforms, but uh, nevertheless, it's now taking place. So, Anthony, uh, uh, you and I may, uh, after one year, uh, can uh, go out and say who's right, who's wrong. Anthony said there's nothing changed much. You know, we return to the old, uh, same operations. In many ways, it's symbolizing this uh, building, you know. But looking at that new building, I, I didn't believe that uh, the dean was able to manage that 300 million baht building. You know, I was doubtful, but now it's here. So my conclusion, my conclusion is this: uh, I think uh, it's no doubt that uh, the local element is more aggressive. I think uh, domestically we are facing with the new challenges uh, when you have political conflicts, when you have groups organized you know, and, and using weapons of war, chasing you around, you know, trying to burn, in my case, burn down my house, trying to you know, attempt on my life uh, using all types of weapons. You know. I think 
they are quite aggressive. They are trying to burn down my mom's house you know, a few uh, years ago when I was serving uh, one administration. I have served five, five prime ministers. Never before, you know, they chase down you, try to pin down you with these weapons of war. Uh, these police and military had to send security guards to protect me. So certainly, never, never before, you know, they can close down intersections, burn down department stores, you know, shooting the Grand Palace with the weapons of war. And they admitted that. Uh, that guy was sentenced to jail. He admitted that, yes, I'm the one who just using the uh, weapon of war M79 to shoot down the Ministry of Defense and the Emerald Buddha Temple. So one, number one, we are facing with this more aggressive local element, certainly much more aggressive than before, you know, uh, for, a for a variety of reasons. And second, of course, foreign element is ever more present. You cannot deny that. And uh, Kun Pawut can tell you that uh, more than 70 checkpoints uh, around on the borders. We have much more problems with 25 million visits uh, per year with the uh, very uh, limited resources uh, that we have. Uh, uh, certainly, you need to reorganize this uh, to, uh, to cope up with this ever more present uh, foreign element. But then again, you have even, even more effort uh, to combat that, to counter that by the military-led government, by the uh, current regime, which are placing more values, more importance on the uh, security. Uh, it's very clear from the Prime Minister's point of view. If we cannot see killed, we cannot move on. If we are not secure, we cannot grow. If we cannot be secure, uh, we cannot return to normalcy. So he said, first thing first, you need to uh, be more secure, meaning the people of Thailand, meaning the country. Uh, the security and the safety and the stability of the country must be first. He said that at the United, United Nations also last week, that Thailand is aimed uh, for that. But my, then again, I'll end with the question, like Anthony. Uh, my, my two questions, and of course, my responsibility you know, as an advisor is to push, uh, one, uh, how to improve the uh, you know, preventive measures. You see, I, I think uh, now it's very clear that we need to improve the preventive measures to prevent this kind of incident to happen. I think we have to work hard within a year or two before this administration leaves the office. But second is yeah, much more important, how to make the new structure permanent. How, when you return to normalcy, the civilian you know, elected government returns to power, they can work with Kun Pawut you know, much more successful. Uh, and unlike in the previous years, civilian government, I know for sure, I have been working with them for more than 20 years, uh, are placing less values yeah, in terms of, of security. Certainly not foreign you know, element, but I think this is a good time to turn around and make things happen. I, I think, lastly, yeah, I think we cannot do it without you know, cooperation with foreign countries. It's quite sad that certain countries put their limits in the corporations uh, on themselves and being frustrated with us uh, that they cannot cooperate with us. I don't know what to do. That's your own limitations. That's your own law. That's your own rules. But we are willing to cooperate much more uh, with these countries as it's, it's proof in this such a song case that without these corporations from certain countries, we are not going to make those arrests. So I think I'll end it up here and, and then I'll pass on more harder questions to Kun Pabut. Thank you, Thank you. And, uh, uh, the, the room analogy is apt. Uh, so 20 odd years ago when we began teaching around here, this room is the same room. Uh, the, ceiling, the, fan, the ceiling fans are the same. The, the wooden chairs in the background are the same. All the same. Except there has been a big profound change. It's aircon now. Before we didn't have aircon in those days. So that's a way of uh, adapting to new challenges as well. Now, John Bentan, you mentioned uh, a number of agencies that need streamlining. So uh, NIA, National Intelligence Agency, uh, the NSC, National Security Council, SBPAC, Southern Border Provinces Administrative Center, and uh, ISOC, uh, Internal Security Operations Command. Uh, and customs and, and the special branch, the number of agencies that need more coordination and perhaps streamlining into a new, a new center, a new unit. Uh, now we come to our uh, 
remaining speaker, you know, we're always thankful to all speakers because they spare their time, they share their expertise. But in particular today, I really want to go out of my way to thank uh, Police Lieutenant General for Wood Kawan City uh, because there's not been a day that has gone by since August 17 that his name is not in the news. Uh, he has been uh, questioned, uh, asked all kinds of questions, and I think he's been very patient. So he will give us, a, I think, a, a couple of directions. First, an update on the, on the situation since, uh, since the time, since August 17, and then maybe to uh, look at what's being done and looking forward in particular uh, on how we might prevent and deal with this in the, in the future. Um, Lieutenant General Wood, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Titina. So, we will, uh, I will start from, from the progressive about the investigation for, for lovely details. It's about the uh, most most about this about how we how we uh, how many issues of, of, of warranted from from this uh, slide. Uh, this one after we after the case has happened, we try to invest how how who is a who is a group of the guy who come in and make the bomb has happened. So we, we collect the, all the you know, footsteps from this room. This room is for, for the sam this is a sample for our, our cooperation with, with the private sector. This room is made for, I think it's about more than five years in, uh, to protect the area of Rat Basong, uh, commercial buildings around, all, all the buildings around that. Set up the building, it's like a Rat Basong association to protect themselves because we didn't have the budget to protect them, so they alert and, 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 and make everything under our, our, uh, our cooperation, our suggestion to be like this. So after not more than half an hour, we, we, we can collect the, the, the will of the widow first head from, from the yellow shirt from this, from this room. So at that, they be sent to uh, the picture to, air, to uh, our checkpoint not just from the uh, police immigration, we sent to uh, every checkpoint, military checkpoint, and navy, and uh, uh, so it's a, maybe it's a custom checkpoint and so every checkpoint received that picture, but it's not clear picture because that's the first camera that they 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 estimate there. This is for it's old about five years, so it's it's too old. They have to plan, have the plan to change end of this year. So now it's changed already. So uh, the, the picture is not clear, so this is not, not easy to analyze. But we try to stop everybody to come in and out, uh, to come, to try to come out, try to go out every checkpoint. So we have the, you reason from the news, some people have to, have to, uh, have to search every, everything and have the picture at many, many airport, every airport. And after that, we can, we can have to draw picture by, by the witness. This is a guy who, who, who has a yellow shirt. You see, have a, they have the, the long hair and wear the glass. It's made, maybe something from the nose is bigger than, than, than the real one. <coughs> and the, uh, the next day, we have an, another incident in, in Saton here. We just we just collect from this from this video footage from from the shop around from the shop and the metal pole camera around that area. So we, we issue the the second warrants from the uh, from the Saton Pier incident, and that we we have the uh, uh, the detail that. The resident of that group stay around the uh, Minbury and Nongjaw. So we searched at that apartment, two apartments that you heard from the news. That we 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 can issue the the ones for the three three person who involved for the uh, for the for that apartment and that two apartment and one housing. This one, and this one, he, who is the one uh, husband to help one uh, to support the money and help 
everything for for mm-hmm. make the the resident for the for this gang. And after that, we we arrested one guy in in the uh, Cambodia border around the Sakao province. He's a Mali Yusuf that you heard from the news. He's a very important guy. He he's the chemical. He know everything about to make the bomb and to to mix and make the TAPT. So we we we, we found the. TFTP in, in, in the refrigerator in that apartment. So some, some, some left. And we, ha- we can, we can uh, took out from, from their phone, uh, from the picture of the, the real bomb at Lapasong intersection and Saton Pier. They, after they make the bomb, they put the bomb in, in, in their bed and take the picture by phone. We can receive, we can take out the picture but I need to bring here because uh, it's still in secret. Two bombs is made by, I think it's made by, by this guy. And this one, who's, uh, the guy that's a support, everything from, from, from the two guys. This one also, to buy everything from, uh, buy the food and buy the important thing from, from the apartments nearby Nong Chow. And this one is the, the guy that Yusuf Fu said he's a he's a supporter, he they all make every every order from from the, from there. From from, from from them to to make the bomb. This one is also. This one is Thai guy who have many many criminal record. About nine or eight times in here. But it's not it's not quite important person, it's maybe just support by Thai sides. This one, the, the, less, the, the last one. So the chart that you know from the new, let me go fastly because it's very needy. Uh, this one by, by, uh, by our criminal drawing. You see, from down there, it's just the, first, the first picture that we've, we, can, we can get from, from, from the witness. And when we took out the hair, took out the glass, and make the peel, and make the brief, make the beer is like this, because it's 14, 14 12 days. It's very look like Mr. Bilan. And now they confess already. Both of them confess everything. So this is one we try to do about about how to how to make it safety uh, and permanently. This one we we try to cover it with the uh, private sector to protect themselves by by camera and by the procedure or by the, the officer. We try to train the officer, the security officer of the department and the building around around the important place. And this one to. Uh, I'm by myself to training and my staff. Many, many, uh, every every uh, chief of the police of that every area have the training to the officer, security officer every week, and every week and give and change every detail each other. And we try to add up the officer to deploy the officer in the important area, the historic area, and the uh, tourist area. Not just in Bangkok, it, in Bangkok and m- many important uh, provinces around the country, but mostly it's the uh, out of uniform to try to not uh, to make this uh, destroy the uh, the atmosphere of tourist atmosphere. So we try to add up for out of uniform place. Okay, and the future. We cannot, we, we, uh, from, from this incident, we cannot deny that we did have, we have the weak, weak point. We cannot deny. So we try to change the, uh, the crisis to be an uh, opportunity. Uh, I think it's the same for, for, for with the many, many, many countries. Every country improved the security system after the big incident. Then now we try to, we try to improve after if not quite big incident, 
if we compare to another country, but we have to improve because we have the visitor more than, that Dr. Panitan says, more than 25 million a year. So I think it's be increased every year. It's maybe 30 visitors next year. So we try to improve. Uh, the first thing that uh, we have to concern about the immigration system, or immigration uh, technology system for improve. But right now, we only have uh, the one level feature to analyze the people, just uh, matching just with the data or the number of the passport number or the number of ID is not enough. Now we, we, we received the order from, from our Prime Minister to, to, to exhibit this, the, the new system we used. Uh, we tried to use uh, the biometric. We used both uh, with data matching and uh, fingerprints and face matching. We, were, we brought, I think it's, uh, it will be finished end of this year, end of, uh, uh, end of next year. Before, before end of next year, we finish. We use the uh, biometric matching. This means every, every checkpoint, uh, now we computerize uh, every checkpoint already, but only one feature. We will add up the three feature. Both the uh, two feature add up. This means we, we will use for three feature to analyze the people who come in and out every every checkpoint, every counter, and try to uh, use the local police to use that system also. Every police we, we can we can uh, they can use this system to check the foreigners coming here, uh, they overstay or not, uh, whose name, even uh, we, can, we can check, even just only have the fingerprint in, in, the, uh, in the crime scene, we can check matching for who is the owner of these fingerprints, who was the owner of this picture. It's maybe faster than the old system. Uh, and the next step that we try to uh, cooperate with the uh, private sector to use their uh, widow footed a video system. It's not just this system, because it's this system just only, um, I think it's just only pass, passive action. When we search back after it happened, but now we try to use the cell line camera and things to make the uh, proactive system. It's maybe better than this, it's maybe, for such as this, this, this incident in Lapasong, when, the, when someone forgot something, forgot the bag, we can set up such that for one minute. If after one minute they alert, the system will be alert. We can set back, the system will search back by automatic, automatically to, to, to see that how, how they forgot that things. It's, it's this case, they will hurry to, to move out. So it means this is not a normal case. Uh, the system will be alert, everybody go out. If, even the bomb is nobody hurt. This is a system that we, we can we try to make many, many uh, safety zones in Bangkok, such as Prat Pasong, Shit Rong, Siam Square, and the, the building, many, many bring to be the safety zone. But we, we have to help each other because we lack of the, the budget. So we try to make the knowledge of how to educate the private sector to have my own system. And we can send the chart face recognition program that we use in, in the immigration to cut up maybe the a small small application to install with the server of camera in private sector out in the building and safety zone to serve the most wanted people that we know can set an online all the time. That, that we will do in, in the next few years. And, to, and, and after this, we try to protect the, uh, the, the, natural, cha the natural channel of, the, uh, of our border that we have uh, more than 40,000 kilometer next to our neighborhood country. So it's very dangerous. Every, every Every meter of, of the border, they can pass very easy. So that from the Kong River, it can cross every, every, every area. 
and the other uh, north border is they can cross the mountain, many way to cross the mountain and go in. So we try to cut up from, from the every way, but it's not easy, but we have to try, we have to do. Thank you. General Bowood, so this is an update on, on the, the safety precautions uh, responses taken since uh, the bomb attack. Um, with uh, kind of, you know, looking for fashion, I think there will be a lot of questions. Uh, we have this is one of our larger events. Uh, there are almost 200 people who sign up. So the floor now is open. Uh, there's a microphone uh, that's going around the room. There's also a microphone stand. So please raise your hand if you want to make a question or comment. We have until about 11:30 or so. Yes, Mr. Dubus. Uh, good morning, I'm Anne I am a journalist. After the bombing, we didn't hear much from the Chinese authorities. So my question is, do you know of any technical assistance or different assistance given by the Chinese authority to Thai police or Thai authorities about the bombing? Thank you. Yes, sir. how has the Chinese authorities responded uh, or have you uh, this, this bomb attack? So we, we uh, they, they respond by, by trying to help everything that we, we ask, but right now we can do everything by, by our, our, our officer and we don't have, um, uh, we don't have the issue that, that to make the Chinese help, just like the Chinese. We ask for everybody, every country. We cannot, we cannot ask uh, just like one country. So we ask every, if we, uh, if the country every know all about the uh, the crew of of the, this gang, uh, every country will report us by by in the pro channel. It's not just the China. Dr. Pani, I will add just, that. Just for your information, I, I think at the policy level, uh, we have been, uh, I mean the National Security Council in particular, has been updating their corporations uh, with uh, different countries. I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they have updated and recently signed two new MOUs uh, with the Chinese uh, security uh, agencies. I think one of the MOUs is aiming to counter the uh, uh, transnational crime, I think uh, uh, yeah. that, that, that's one one uh, one recently updated you know, uh, corporation. Uh, I think we also, if I'm not mistaken, one or two uh, MOU has been updated with India. With India, I think recently, I think the NSC chief uh, from India visited uh, Thailand recently, and our NSC chief also visited uh, India. And we are looking at uh, improving uh, cooperation with uh, uh, po at a poli policy level uh, for, uh, with India too. Uh, there are a lot of discussions with other updates uh, with uh, uh, Russia, for example, uh, realizing that we have more than one million Russian tourists uh, in Thailand. I think the police uh, making the uh, uh, inquiry to our office that uh, we need to uh, look into this. Uh, uh, safety of these uh, people uh, in, in a much more uh, comprehensive way. Uh, so, so we are working on that. Uh, uh, on top of these, uh, uh, you may notice that uh, uh, the National Security Council has a new chief uh, for the ministry, and he is now pushing his way to get new laws. For example, uh, new law SC. Uh, soon you will have the new operations uh, Command, combined command center at sea to come to combat trafficking and others. It's going to be a, a, a new, a brand new law similar to ISO, but uh, aiming at uh, sea operations uh, uh, led by the navy and different agencies under one roof. Uh, so he's now pushing uh, toward that. I think uh, last uh, month they were trying to conclude uh, a new draft law and pass it to, to the national assembly. 
they are also in the process of updating different new national security strategies and policies, ranging from national security policy to the policies on borders. I think on borders, uh, they are now ready to uh, begin to implement uh, some of the new updated uh, uh, practices. I think we are going to put up certain electronic fence with some of our uh, neighbor. It has been accepted in, in, in principle uh, at the policy level already that, uh, of course, uh, we don't have that much sophistication or money like the most modern fence that you see in the Middle East, uh, but there will be a Thai version of the electronic or uh, combined with the patrol uh, fencing system on certain borders uh, just to curb down some of these uh, uh, problems uh, that we mentioned. Uh, uh, so there's a new, brand new uh, uh, policies on these policies uh, on immigration, on border control, uh, and also on the, uh, on, on the south and a few other key areas, I think, altogether almost 16 areas that the NSC is outlining that they have not been updating uh, in the past few years we, due to the domestic uh, problems, but now it's on the way. Uh, within a year, you will see a lot of these new policies uh, being updated, and I think the police and others will take this and to the, to, the, to, to the ground and implement it. We will continue to evaluate the success of these uh, new uh, implementations and new policies uh, as we go along in the uh, next few months and, and make sure that these inputs will come back you know, to uh, the new thinking of uh, what is the better structure for Thailand to handle this uh, uh, comprehensive uh, you know, new kind of uh, security that we, are, that, we are, that we are facing. The victory is clear, one thing. They told us that they are not wanting the civilian to rely on them too much you know, on operations. They are, they are willing and able to lend certain capacity you know, to the police. Am I, am I correct? But they are quite reluctant more and more uh, to do your job, right? Uh, so uh, they said the police and civilian units must do these uh, you know, activities in the future. I'm not so sure in practice uh, how fast can we do that because as you know, a lot of capacity is still within the military. And uh, to be honest also, I think some of the military people are quite worried that uh, if we transfer some of this capacity you know, to the civilian agencies, uh, what will happen? But I think that's a normal path. We need to transfer more and more some of these capabilities, uh, beginning from this incident. But there are a lot more uh, to do. Yeah. That's, uh, that's my observation. Okay, thank you, Tan Tan. We invited uh, an army representative, but in the end we couldn't uh, secure his attendance. Um, but Tan Tan will speak partly on behalf of the military, since he's the principal advisor to the defense minister. Now, can we say, it is fair to say that Thailand has sought assistance from a wide variety of countries, and that Thailand has not turned away or turned down any assistance from anyone, from any country. Is that fair to say? It's true. We, we, we try to use, we try to ask for for help for every country, such so as we we send every uh, note to uh, to the Interpol channel for 190 country to search for the gang for us. And right now we receive some mail from 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 the Interpol, but it's not it's not it's not it's not the, the real one. It's not the real gang. We have many details from Interpol. This. But we, we try to ask the technique techni uh, assistant from assist from from a European country and from American every country that we ask. But but uh, at this time we, we, we will know about this 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 group already. So they didn't come. They just they just received to come and they didn't come because we we, we know that already. But uh, maybe in the future we try to ask you about the training. After we use uh, the new system for biometric, and we have to go on for to use the biometric for every every office, every agency of, of government agency, even on, on the private sector also, to analyze who's the who's the who's the bad guy who come in, and to use it every uh, local place 
to use the biometric and use every system that we analyze to to protect our country. Even if you can see equipment that Dr. Bonetan says, our border control, this is like uh, Mexico and in the United States, used from, from the balloon to to have the, uh, the camera, balloon camera to protect the borders. It's very, very long way. It's, it's like this, but, but it is in the desert. It's very, very easy to protect. Uh, in here is have the river, have a lot of forest. We can use the balloon, so we can do the sensor. Another sensor that we can, we have, and uh, we have to uh, study for for this thing also. But it's not it's as fast that we we, we want to do. Is that it's been for two three years. But we uh, the first thing that we can do, we we can beginning we try to uh, educate the police, the local police, to try to protect from the foreigners who come out to come in and out by the border. And uh, we have corporate, we have to cooperate with, with, the, uh, with, with the army, or with, the, with the military size and the private sector also to protect the border together. That, that we will do. Yeah. Just, just, uh, uh, just to make it clear that uh, uh, Deputy Prime Minister for Security uh, is welcome uh, all assistance and helps uh, especially in the technical terms, um, uh, expertise that we don't have. Uh, but uh, he's very clear also that uh, uh, a foreign team coming to Thailand to investigate uh, is not possible. It's, uh, it's a police work. And I think this is fair. I don't think you, uh, in Spain, when the Madrid bomb uh, uh, took place, you don't expect the Thai police to arrive in Madrid and begin to investigate. Uh, you don't expect the Thai police team to go to Paris to investigate about the killing of the cartoonists. I think that's not a practice, you see. But, but different corporations already existed. And then again, I would say, without this assistance, I think investigation will not go forward uh, as it has. Uh, we have many, many useful uh, helps, you know, based on the structure that we have. You know, which intelligence sharing, uh, capacity sharing, uh, and indeed, uh, from this article, some case, we saw new ways of uh, cooperation you know, with uh, our foreign friends. And I hope this will make it permanent in our new structure. The system is, is just, uh, very complicated. We can set up for just for one or two days. So the system we have to estimate for, for, the, for the area first. And maybe a big database is very big data is more than 100 person in there. So. If you need, if you send the help, it's not very fast. Fast as you can, it's maybe one month, it's maybe two weeks. It's not fast enough for that we, we, we search by ourselves. So it's, it's mean we have to set up the system by ourselves, by our country to set up. So we have to study. We study this for more than five years since I work in immigration uh, uh, agent. So, but right now we, we have the good news to our, our guests, our, our country, that the Prime Minister allow us to do this system also. And we have to go on every step and every agency. Thank you. Okay, so, what Mr. Benetan said, uh, timeliness is also an issue, urgency. OK. Uh, additional other comments, questions? I think um, there was a hand up here. Maybe no longer. Any other questions and comments? Okay, I have a question. Um, uh, General, to what extent? I mean, we've heard uh, from all the speakers in different ways that uh, you know there's a foreign involvement, uh, foreign elements, uh, the photos that you put up, uh, but we also have heard some mention of the domestic involvement. So, to what extent is this uh, domestic? This art, uh, this gentleman named Art that we're going after. What's his role? You mentioned that his role is minor, or is it major? Do we know? To what extent are Thais involved in this whole uh, Thai involvement? This is, I think it's just in, in, in natural. When, you, when this case has happened in, in the country, they have the, the, old, the old people in that country involved. In, in here it's just also, but not to the big uh, the, the big role, just lead the driver, just lead the transport, and just lead fire some equipment, not make the bomb. 
you see this uh, make uh, to to uh, uh, open the house open the apartment to find the uh, resident to to find to buy the food for for the, for the gangs to transport from from this to Sakao, from this to south border only this not many uh, if uh, if if you saw if uh, what we what we what we saw in the past few weeks uh, uh, on the investigation is quite different in my thinking one they're very meticulous in, in, in many in many ways uh, relying more on forensic uh, or forensic and, and scientific evidences this is maybe due to what I mentioned uh, uh, difficulties in this case and uh, and those who are arrested are not cooperative uh, uh, enough so we relied more on forensic and scientific evidence so the investigation is still ongoing uh, and second less speculation uh, in compared to uh, different uh, cases uh, so the role of the Thai uh, individuals who are involved in this are just simply from activities detected you see uh, but still investigation is still going on uh, probing into connections and links but there's no, uh, unlike normal time, uh, you see a lot of speculations, a lot of uh, political groups uh, coming out to accuse each other. Uh, none in this case. None in this case. The government has not mentioned any any uh, involvement of any domestic uh, political groups. Uh, the police are just simply uh, release information based on the evidences, uh, hard evidences. I think this is quite different from 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 what it took place uh, in those uh, deeply divided you know, uh, uh, environment in the last few years. So this is quite near. Of course, uh, with certain elements, it's quite the same. Uh, Kun Art is very dubious you know, uh, character. Uh, and that's very old way of, 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 uh, of doing things. You know, this person doesn't have an identification of uh, all this is quite, this is quite odd. You know. Uh, judging from the modern system that we have, so this is what we have to correct. And then again, there's another odd, you know, the ex-police chief, you know, you read the article. He's also making the interesting comments you know, uh, in the past, you know, but he's now retired. And that's a, that's a, that is another odd element. You know. uh, so, so you have new and old you know, approaches, but in the end, if you look closely, the investigation is very tightly you know, uh, implemented and also quite effective. Uh, we, we follow that investigation closely and evaluating along the way. I think the uh, one of the former NIA chief, Kun uh, Pumarat Taps Disa Hong, is one of the top uh, NIA uh, security analysts in the country. Uh, he made the comment on the Thai PBS uh, last week, uh, and to my surprise too, he said, the police investigation is, is very good. Contrary to the public belief or academic belief, uh, but Kun Pumalat is one of the most respected uh, individuals. Uh, he's now being appointed uh, to the uh, assembly uh, to, of the 200, of, of the 21 constitution uh, drafter uh, entrusted to look into the security structure in, uh, in the in the new constitution. Uh, to my surprise, a little bit too. You know, I'm also from the academic, quite doubtful in some of. Uh, his works, but uh, but when we look into it closely, we saw some new practices. Uh, this may be because the military led put emphasis on this, or maybe the team is now very much really unified. Uh, I am told they don't even tell me some of these uh, investigations. They are very tightly, uh, very controlled, and very uh, meticulous in some of these uh, uh, activities. Unusual, unusual. Uh, I've been working with different governments, and this is one of the first. I'm not making a judgment yet, which is good or not. As I told you, uh, we are in the process of evaluating their work, but uh, from what we see, uh, uh, preliminary report, uh, they have done a good job. Uh, that's according to the NIA chief. Okay. Thank you, Tan Uh You know, you cannot, uh, the public can hardly be blamed for having different perceptions. 
is uh, within hours after the, the attack, this, the crime scene was cleared. And of course, we've had a lot of odd comments from the, 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 the former police chief that have gone this way and that way, day after day. So a lot of people are confused, uh, understandably. Um, any other questions, comments? So I think that the, the, the police general has said now that the role of ties, so far as we know, uh, investigations are ongoing, but so far as we can tell, uh, is more secondary. Yes, it's more support, not mastermind. Not the main perpetrators, but the support staff, perhaps. Uh, uh, other questions, comments? Yes, uh, the hand there by the oh, uh, Margaret McMillan. Hi, my name is Margaret McMillan, and I'm a retired American diplomat. But one thing I have not heard you mention this morning, but I think is very much related to this, is the question of refugees. And Thailand is not a signatory uh, to the 1951 Convention on Refugees. And this has pluses and minuses for Thailand. But is there any consideration of trying to regularize the way that refugee issues are handled in Thailand, either through signing the convention or taking another approach? This is a good question. We don't have a comprehensive migration policy and mindset and handling, agency handling. So on May 29th this year, we had an international conference on the Rohingya, on irregular migration, we call it. Um, but the case of the Uyghurs, are they, what are they? Are they asylum seekers, refugees? Um, what do we call them? So perhaps, Dr. Ben Chan, start with you. Refugees. I think there are two, uh, two issues. Relating to that question, one is that at the international level, uh, should we uh, go further uh, from from what we are standing in terms of becoming a you know a, a signatory or ratifying uh, that kind of convention? Uh, I don't see any any changes in the current status yet. Uh, I could be wrong because I I'm in the security area. I'm not in the foreign policy area, but uh, but uh, from what we see from the Security agency point of view, uh, we don't we take uh, any any uh, uh, change in the current position of the current government. Uh, but secondly, uh, in fact, I was wrong uh, uh, years before. Uh, I'm not wrong, but maybe a little bit off the mark and sharing your comment. Also, I thought that Thailand did have a comprehensive policy on immigration, like that you mentioned. But then again, something happened during the Yingluck administration. Uh, if you realize and if you notice, uh, uh, the NSC forwarded a comprehensive uh, master plan on how to manage the immigration, refugees and others, uh, into the cabinet for approval. Uh, that comprehensive plan involves uh, restructuring almost 20 different agencies to work under one roof. Uh, and I was thinking at that time that this is the first time I saw that they make an official you know, uh, uh, attempt to reorganize uh, the agencies uh, to tackle this uh, difficult question. That uh, commission plan was adopted. Was adopted. Uh, we supplement with different uh, 
cooperation with different countries. Uh, so from time to time, you, you see uh, uh, practices uh, of these uh, uh, issues. Uh, and that raises the question of why we should or should not be part of that international community. On one hand, you saw the great flexibility uh, in the past government successfully in handling these issues. But that flexibility is not appreciated at the international level. Uh, and more and more you're subjected to control by international agencies. So I think this is a transition period for the, uh, for the Thai government and for Thailand to, to strike a better balance. And we hope that uh, some of these uh, issues will be addressed uh, in the new constitution. But then, then again, you wouldn't want to have the constitution too long. It's already 300 plus articles. So I'm not so sure how uh, that uh, new uh, policy should be handled if not by the constitution or maybe by the uh, organic law after the constitution. But certainly, uh, these new circumstances uh, are now requiring us to, to look into it and, and maybe examine these issues. But at the moment, there's no change in our practice. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions, comments? Speakers for sparing their time and sharing their expertise. Uh, very valuable today. Thank you, all of you. Thank you.